Hey guys, Hope Enough here. Going to be doing a reaction to Top 15 Worst Glitches Part 1 uh, by Josh Scorcher. I'll be doing a reaction to this and also another one, so another guy recommended, so. I'll obviously finish this one up too, so. It'll give me something to do. <laughs> so, yeah, let's, I guess, yeah, just get into it. A three, a two, -a, and a one. -a. I've never played those games. Oh god, that was cool. I want to learn to do that. <laughs> Ooh, that's neat. I love those sort of games. <laughs> never played that one, but... Like all media, video games are not immune to their fair share of repeating elements. For example, a contained area in a particular location finalized with of a powerful foe that was corrupting the area. Some of these are standard to the medium. But then there are these things. Tropes so thin and contrite that you can see them from a mile away and yet are still found all the time. You know what? This is a list dedicated to the most stupid of them. The ones that make you want to turn off the game in disgust as soon as you see them. The top 15 worst cliches in gaming. For this list, what? the cliches must only be found oh, in video cool. games, so things like amnesia are I've only used we one of those machines once. This. Everything on this list now. has been done right at one point or another. However, for the most part, they are not. Which is why we hate them so much. I've never played so, any of those games. With all that said, let's, let's get started. Unless that's for Xbox Ones and PS Ones, and yeah. I've only used Xbox 360s. And this computer, so yeah. Oh my goodness, Xbox One though. Yeah. Okay. You know that this is going to be a fun list when I this thing is I played that game bottom. once, I got bored forced of it Forced failure situations are forced loss battles, but on a bigger scale. It's when a game forces you to complete a section of a game or a boss fight, even though in the next cutscene, you die anyway. And wow, the players left that's a horrible game. His mind. What was the point of that? Are there games that have used this well? Yeah. As Josh said in his top 10 video game endings, the I love Halo I played that game, so I loved it. Because everyone understands that this is now a forced loss scenario resulting in the honorable death of Noble Six. The same can also be applied to Final Fantasy Crisis Core and by extension Mega Man X. But in almost all other cases, the player doesn't know this, which is pretty annoying. A great example of this from FPS games would have to be the No Russian from Modern Warfare 2. You fight through waves of hard to beat SWAT teams in the second leg of this mission, especially if you don't want to kill them, and are greeted with Makarov shooting you and leaving you for dead. What the fuck? I'm dead! Question well, Would it have made any difference if I died during the shootout? Which I did. A lot. This also happened it, in Modern Warfare a few times. But still, you did, to be the did something, to corner right? That of sun. You can Before you die. You can kill him in the street and get a game over, or corner him to the top of a building where he shoots himself in the face. There's also <laughs> one from Battlefield 3, which attempts to rip off Halo Reach's ending but fails. While in Halo Reach, you know you can't survive, and this is just showcasing an honorable way to go to I played that part. In Battlefield 3, you were given a faint glimmer of hope by them saying you will be rescued in 15 minutes. It. Is. Impossible. So we ask you, it reminds why me you of that with these newest alien movie where they have to, now before not you the newest one, but the fans, get on your aliens horses, and predator, the, RPGs are some of the worst users of yeah, these they end well. You start to waste your items in order to defeat the boss, only to but realize everyone, it was the whole village is given hope, hey there, just knowing fighting. that they're all going to be some butchered, other games that use because the government said so, too. so they can nuke them, and kill all the aliens. Paper Mario, Thousand Year Door, Kingdom Hearts, Red Alert, Thousand Year Door again, Kingdom Hearts 2, Force Unleashed, Crap on Your Soul. Sorry. Again, all the sweet kidding games. Naruto Clash of the Ninja. X Men Origins. Dragon Ball Z Budokai Tenkaichi 2. God of War 2. And Aquaria. I like God of War. I never played it. Aquaria, dude. Someone just had to end that segment. What's say Aquaria? Luck-based events may keep things spicy and interesting, but when it's the difference between winning and losing, it can be very frustrating. 
I'm sure we've all faced that one boss that in order to win against it, you have to pray to Lady Luck herself that it doesn't use a particular move. Mm -hmm. Jasper Bat Jr. The Boost Garden. Demix. Dance, water, dance! There are even games based around such events, like Mario Party. And while Never we played. love this series, some of the stuff in it ticks us off. Some of the mini games are decided by luck alone, which is completely ridiculous. And there's also the game guy, who takes all your coins if you land on one of his spaces, you and dick. forces you to bet them all on the game you have less than a 50% chance of winning. But one of the worst defenders is most of the Pokemon series. Now, don't get us wrong, we love oh, the, Pokemon. the rares. Oh, the rares. When it isn't custom, I accidentally it killed a... My very Never first rare warm, in fuzzy Pokemon Loot, Blue, or Pokemon with a critical hit Luna, that you desperately Luna wanted Star to Luna. catch. And I'm sure yeah, we're I was all pissed. well aware of the sheer fun we had very first the shiny planet for the Ghastly. legendary dog. I it. God Seeing damn every it. time you <laughs> enter a new city or route, they move to the other side of the bloody planet. Oh, I, I hate that part. I played all of Catching Pokemon, Pokemon games. while incredibly satisfying, is one of the most frustrating gameplay mechanics in gaming history. Yes! I had to throw yes! almost 20 Pokeballs to catch one legendary. Yes! Oh, That's my reaction every fucking time. Yep. I'm basically like, God fucking bitch. <laughs> Rapid input sequences or button mashing are used during sequences of panic or high speed action. And while that might help with the immersion somewhat, it kind of breaks down with the physical injury involved to do them. Seriously, I've broken controllers because of these sequences. And let's not forget how eh? nice your hands feel after these sequences are done. I've gotten burns, freaking burns, from playing Mario Party. And there are whole games that have you press the same button over and over, like Dynasty Warriors. <laughs> Say what? Dynasty Warriors is the button match. Yeah, I used to play it. I am going to kill you, you son of a- Hey, we're back. Sorry about that. Let's move on. It's not a button measure. It's not a it button. is. A lot of fighting games do this as well. Death it games, really Sonic is. Fighters, Dragon Just press the goddamn Limit, same Dragon button every Ball damn time. Two, Naruto Ninja Storm. You know what? Most that. anime games do this. The Canary Mary mini games from Banjo Tooie, however, are often said to be the most painful example. You have to hammer down the A button for three minutes straight at any uh, That's speed. gonna hurt. You also have to race her four times every time she gets faster, and if you go too far ahead, she will rocket ahead of you to first place. Ah, oh, bitch. To this day, I still haven't completed all of her challenges. <laughs> Cover systems have spread like I just watched the cinemas of this, I don't never play the game. There. And while some games use them well, for the most part they're completely unneeded. Cover systems are not realistic, impractical, and unnecessary for most games. If you played one cover system, you may as well have played them all. And the battles are so predictable too. I mean, there's so many of them, you can make a guide out of them. Which we have, in fact. <laughs> we did. The official guide to cover systems. Step 1. Duck behind wall. Step 2. Focus on enemy. Step 3. Wait for enemy to show its head. Be patient as this part usually takes a long time. Step 4. Get perfect headshot. Step 5. Move to next wall. <laughs> yep. Steps 1 through 5 until all enemies are eliminated. I usually mow them no, down. I really don't mind them. But it's so unrealistic. I mean, getting a perfect headshot without seeing him at all, the moment he puts his head up, that's stupid! How the hell would you know? Why don't you join the actual army and find out? Oh. Alex, number transition. Number transition. Number transition. Hey, 
Chewie, can you go get us a soda for us? The pop? Mm. Sure. Uh, <laughs> you time now, Chewie. I'm trying. <laughs> the heck? The force is not force. with you, Padawan. No soda? Yeah, I drink tap water, so don't bitch. The heck? What's going on? I can't use my aerial blades either. What's going on? Where are powers gone? I don't know. It doesn't make any logical <laughs> sense. Pretty stupid, huh? Well, now you know how we feel about ability loss. <laughs> Um, no, seriously guys, I can't use- Shut up, Josh. Josh. <laughs> ability laws can get very annoying. Once you get used to your powers, weapons, abilities- Oh, it reminds me of Digimon. The game loses a bit of its fun. The D-Digivolve, you, you make it weak as fuck, and you got the re evil which takes, takes up a goddamn turn. Cards, which are your only they keep bringing of you attack. down. Now, this wouldn't be a problem if it were a stealth mission or something, but no. It throws you right into the lion's den. And who has to kill them? Your partner, whose attacks are incredibly weak, and if he happens to die, mission over, start again. <laughs> God, Granted, that would this suck. sort of situation can be interesting if it's an optional and or temporary mission like in Fable, Skyrim, or even Wind Waker. Or take away Skyrim to truly test the player's skill without crutches like in Super Mario Sunshine. But I've only played one Mario. Taking away our powers at the beginning of the game after we get used to having all these cool abilities is totally pointless. And don't give us that crap of giving us a taste of what's to come. It's just a major buzzkill, and there's no excuse for it. See also Castlevania Symphony of the Night. This is gonna be a while, I can tell. <laughs> Save points are one of the oldest game mechanics out there, and a lot of games have done them well. Some, like Skyward Sword and Dead Space, have a lot of them well paced throughout the game, not too far and not too close. I like that stuff. Others, like the Mario and Luigi RPG series, strategically place them to let you know a boss battle is coming next. Or Legend of Dragoon, which allows you to I played that game, games. I almost beat it. But the problem we have with a lot of games that use save points is when they are too few and far between. Save points have been used well before, but for the most part, they're just an unnecessary inconvenience. This is especially irritating in the Metroid series, where if you want to stop playing, you're forced to travel halfway across the map to find a save station. Wow, Hell, most Metroidvanias crap. like Symphony of the Night are guilty of this trope as well. This is also one of the numerous reasons why I hate Pokemon Coliseum. The game didn't waste my time enough? No, it has to throw in save. Oh, I love well. that game. The biggest defender, however, is Resident Evil 4, with some very unnerving spacing in between each typewriter. The earlier Final Fantasies utilized save points to death as well, particularly Final Fantasy I've III. never played the very old the Final Fantasy. The actual one. I played that the one, daunting I think. Of them will be the bane of your sanity. Not to one with Titus and like you feel receive the dark all kicking the building. single save point. <laughs> Harry Potter, Chamber of Secrets for the GBA. There was like actually a game of that. And no save points. And Neil Pest's The Darkest Fairy, which has a few scattered around the entire Wait, what? map. What's that? Now, each gamer usually has a hatred for a certain type of level. Some gamers hate ice levels, some gamers hate space levels, and some gamers hate lava levels. However, the general consensus is that the water level is the worst. Water levels are unavoidable. Water is one of the Earth's natural forces, and its classification yeah, I hate the water element one by two. many cultures lends itself to a fountain of My actual ideas. element is Earth. The thing I looked is, it up, but it was kind of cool. gamers don't hate these levels for their iconography, Plus, it's I've always loved the year mechanics. Heat flying. Most of the time, Hate water it. levels alter gravity and reduce speed, leading to a completely foreign system that's difficult to get used to. This is especially frustrating when enemies can move freely in the water while you have to cope with the restricted movement. Yeah, like in World of Warcraft. Games, they will usually that place this kind area of situation at least once Naga come out of the All the other ads are all around you, and they. Another common trait. You have to look around like mad. Introduce a breath meter. The scenery is lovely, but the rest is a bit time to get out of the water before you drown. There are some levels, which like is why no one goes there. Conquers bad fur they that give you next to none. 
Actually, that everyone, the whole game hates that. Designed. Everyone knows of the infamous I played that. Table, which wasn't technically bad per se, it was just repetitive and long. Or Banjo Tooie's Lord Wu Fact Back, in which the developers didn't realize that slow turning speeds and a speedy enemy aren't very conducive to a good boss fight. <laughs> <laughs> and there are some that just completely oh, change I hate the that wide open space in the ocean. It creeps only. me out. The underwater level from TMNT with that green seaweed. Or. Atlantica. Done! Wait, why are we killing water with fire? <laughs> That's horrible. A lot of gamers see cutscenes as gameplay breaks or an attaboy for getting past certain segments. Hey, he looks cool. And what's the first instinct? Place the controller down and watch the cinematics unfold. And then what happens when the quick time event appears? The game brutally punishes them for not Oh, that monkey looks better. awesome. Now, to be fair, this has been done right on a Thank few so. occasions. In Kingdom Hearts 2, the quick time events are there just to make the battles a little bit easier. In God of War, all the finishers are quick time events. I don't want to play that game because it's too gory. And because there's too many goddamn se sex fiends where everyone's new. Or I'm trying to play a game, not, not watching porn. Or even that. heavy rain, where the entire game is quick time events, so they're kind of hard to miss. But despite the examples we listed, quick time events have rarely been done right. The thing that bugs us the most about them is that we are almost never prepared for them, and these segments are usually the difference between survival or an instant game over. The failure of quick time events usually fall into these categories. A, not being given enough time to react. Oh my god, they killed Kenny! <laughs> B, having very few in the course of the game. C, the event is the difference between you surviving or dying. <sighs> and sometimes I think I've had like that in some games events with button mashing try and guess how we feel about those I hate those button mashing quests uh, for battles Ninja Blade is downright insulting with it though you press one button during each cutscene and if you happen to fail, it rewinds a few seconds so you can do it again, and there are no consequences for failure! Just like the Ontario school system. <laughs> You're not even from here. You know, that's the truth. Americans. And if you break it down, hey, we Americans are events good. are silly. Kinda. It's one button! What's the point? Again. Except when I mean, Capcom like, decides maybe seventy percent of us are a bit obese, but eh, overall we're good people. Nope, nope, take Healthy. off. Shut up! You don't know nothing about anything. Screen. <laughs> Bosses are a core concept of a game. The hell? As we said in the previous video, they're pretty much a quiz to the player that tests their knowledge of the game. Of Oh yeah. Enemy form. Well, so Warcraft is all about teamwork. So, again on the same yeah. material. Boss rushes are irritating. For the most part, they are just lazy ways to fill in space before the final boss. People make the arguments that they build up the final boss. They do not. Boss rushes can be forgiven if the bosses themselves are fun. Oh, that looks cool. Whoa. Or if it's not mandatory to complete the game, like pretty much every Kirby game. But unfortunately, this is not always. Never the played case. that. Which is the worst defender? Makes all these. I, I don't play those type of ever. games. Don't believe me? Well, in Okami during the Arc of Yamato Dark section, ones. you have to fight Nine Tails, Crimson Hell, Ooh, Nine Tails. I love those type Queen, of foxes. And so cool. All over again. These are all long boss fights, and the fact that they didn't include one of the game's major bosses. World of Warcraft this does this. The game, not just padding, With raids, but dungeons, yeah. How but they have to, to keep this it boss going. Rush is. Did we really have to fight Orochi <laughs> a third time? Do you guys Many get Mega anything? Man games, Beautiful Joe, and Devil May Cry 3 do this as well. But Capcom isn't just the only guilty offender. 
multiple Zelda games force boss rushes on you, and it's kind of hit or miss depending on the boss. I'm sure we're all well aware of the notorious Great Maze from Brawl. That was just laziness incarnate. When it's all said and done, forced boss rushes are just unnecessary and time consuming. There are other ways of building tension before a final battle, and these often add it falsely. Alright, uh, that's part one. Pause that. Okay, that was my reaction to that one. I'll be doing the reaction to this later on. And besides that, yeah, have a nice day.